Hi, welcome to the video on varicella zoster virus under the specialist area of paediatrics. So a few questions to get you started. Question one, what does the varicella zoster virus commonly cause in children? Roseola, chickenpox, scarlet fever or measles? So try and remember what you think each infective agent is for these conditions um, and then try and narrow it down. So varicella zoster causes chickenpox. Question two, what type of rash forms with chickenpox? Macular papula, petechial, bullous or vesicular and pustular? And try and think of what chickenpox would look like and how you would describe this um, in dermatology terms. So it's vesicular and pustular. Just going back to that. So vesicular is when it's a raised lesion um, filled with fluid, um, which is usually clear. And then pustula is the same but when the fluid is pus instead of clear, just the differentials. But there'll be a mixture of both of these in the rash. Um, and then question three, what is the incubation period for chickenpox? Okay, um, so it would be 14 to 21 days, but the um, infective period um, varies around um, when you present as well. So we'll discuss this in a bit. So varicella zoster, we'll go through what it is, symptoms and history, how the child might present, investigations, how you'd prevent this, and then differentials, and then the clinical examination and management. So what is varicella? It's another name for chickenpox, as we've discussed, and it's caused by um, varicella zoster virus, and this is the initial infection causing chickenpox. Um, and then we'll go through what the um, next stage of infection would look like. It's highly contagious, so this is really important to remember when you're dealing with a child with suspected chickenpox. Um, it can be transmitted by direct contact with the rash, so always wear gloves in your examination, and respiratory droplets as well. The virus invades the respiratory mucosa first, and then it replicates in the lymph nodes before spreading to infect the skin epithelial cells, presenting as a rash. The virus remains dormant in the sensory nerve roots and can be reactivated in the form of shingles. And so this is why the initial infection is chickenpox and then the secondary infection um, would be called shingles. Um, and yeah, that remains dormant and can present um, in adulthood. So this is typically what chickenpox would look like. Um, initial symptoms include fever, malaise, headache and abdominal pain. And then the itchy rash forms within 48 hours um, and it can be present in the mouth before the skin rash appears. So always remember this when you um, have a child who may have chickenpox. If they don't have a rash, just look in the mouth to see if um, you think it may be starting. So the person is actually infectious one to two days before the rash even appears and for up to five days after the rash is scabbed over. So it's important to know this when you're examining them, but also to tell the parents, um, just to make sure that they um, are kept away from other children, um, for example, at school, because they are, can, are still contagious. So the history, this is an example of how it might present, um, say in the GP. So a girl returns home from nursery, more time aggravated than usual. Next day, crying, itching, and then red rash, torso, upper arms and legs. And then after a week of drinking plenty of fluid and using cooling creams, so sort of symptomatic treatment, she's feeling better and the rash is scabbed over. Investigations that you want to use, so it's mainly a clinical diagnosis, um, looking at the signs and symptoms as we've discussed. The vesicular fluid can be tested using the Sank smear or by testing for direct fluorescent antibodies, but this is rarely done. Preventing this, so um, you want to isolate the infected individuals, as we've um, said, until five days after the rash is scabbed over. In the UK, vaccination is only really given to people who are vulnerable, um, and it's available on the NHS to those over 70 um, to prevent shingles reactivation, because it can be really painful um, and detrimental um, to the elderly. Differentials that you want to make sure you're aware of. 
So the herpes simplex virus, um, this is mainly blisters and it's more focal around the mouth, face or hands. Um, it's not as generalised over the torso as varicella. Stevens-Johnson syndrome, this is quite rare, um, but the it will present with a similar rash, but the patients will have a history of being exposed to medication associated with the condition, such as lamotrigine, carbamazepine, allopurinol, or sulfonamide antibiotics, um, or if they have an underlying infection such as cytomegalovirus, HIV or AIDS, or SLE, so basically if they're immunocompromised. And also monkeypox, so in the history you'd want to ask about travel um, and exposure, um, and these are lesions mainly on the palms and soles, so that's how you would differentiate that from chickenpox. So clinic clinical examination, um, always check for rashes whenever a child comes into a GP or the a &E. um, especially if it's an infant, you'd want to make sure you remove all the clothing, um, even the diaper, um, just to check for a rash. Low grade fever, and then these associated symptoms that we've discussed um, that are present with the young child, but also are more common in adolescents and adults. So management is basically symptomatic, as we've discussed. So paracetamol to reduce the fever, um, let the child feel sort of more comfortable, um, lotions and cooling creams to soothe the rash, and plenty of fluids as well. That's really important. Acyclovir can be started, but it's mainly in immunocompromised children. Um, in healthy children, essentially, it's just running the course um, and alleviating pain and itching. Um, also, tell parents to cut the child's nails and put socks on their hands at night to stop the child from scratching, as it just aggravates and it causes and it can increase the risk of scarring afterwards. Um, so you want to try and prevent that. So, in summary. Um, just a few recap questions. What have you learnt? So what type of rash forms with chickenpox? Vesicular and pustular, petechial, bullous or maculopapular? So it's vesicular and pustular. Question two, where in the body does the varicella zoster virus remain dormant? The spleen, the lungs, the spine or the lymph nodes? Okay, so it's the spine. So as I said, it remains dormant in the sensory nerve roots, which are located in the spine. And then, sorry, if reactivated, that will cause shingles, but that's more presented in adulthood. And then final question, where are you most likely to find the chicken pox rash? So inside the mouth, palms and soles, torso, upper arms and legs, or face and around the mouth. So think of the classic case, um, the example was given, and then also the differentials. So it's on the torso, upper arms and legs. Um, we did discuss that before the rash becomes on the torso, upper arms and legs, you may find it in the mouth. Um, that's one to two days before, um, but mainly that's when the parents notice the rash and bring them to the GP or a and &E, um, if it's on the torso, upper arms or legs. Uh, palms and soles, that was monkeypox, and face and around the mouth, that was herpes. Okay, so that's the end of that presentation. Um, I hope you found it useful. Thank you for listening.